And I call Mr. Barton to move his notice of motion 470. Thank you, Mr. President. Today I want to talk about the multi-purpose taxi program and the uh, deceptive way this has been awarded to Uber. The multi-purpose taxi program supports the transport needs for people with severe and permanent disabilities by offering subsidised passenger vehicle fares to eligible members. The total cost of the scheme is in excess of $70 million annually uh, across approximately 5 million trips. The multi-purpose taxi program subsidy covers 50% of the cost of trips up to the value of $60 per trip uh, and a cap of $2,180 per eligible participant in each financial year. The decision to allow Uber to service work under the multi-purpose ta uh, taxi program scheme puts puts the rights, the welfare, security of our most vulnerable citizens in jeopardy for at least the following reasons. The decision to allow Uber to, to carry multi-purpose taxi work comes from a trial which was conducted in Geelong during the height of the pandemic, uh, locked down from 22nd of March 2020 to 31st of May 2020, which covered service of only 170 trips. We're talking about 17 people who did 10 trips over nearly three months. In the same period, Geelong taxis serviced thousands. During the, during the period of the trial, more than 90% of the registered commercial passenger vehicles were parked and the number of passenger trips were markedly reduced, obviously. Although the trial was held as a success by Uber, it is questionable how the data was collected and under these extreme and atypical circumstances could in any way reflect the normal operating conditions, particularly with such a small sample size. And we must also note that Uber paid for this trial. The trial simply lacks integrity, casting significant doubt over the merit of the conclusions. It's drawn and raises questions whether proper due diligence and risk assessments were conducted. Other than to say the trial was a success, the Commercial Passenger Vehicles Victoria have not shared any supporting details on the reports about outcomes or findings. It is imperative that the trial results are released along with the associated risk and financial impact assessments for industry-wide consider considerations. Two, unlike taxis, which have to date exclusively serviced the transport needs of the aged, the incapacitated and disabled through the multi-purpose taxi program, Uber vehicles do not have fixed tamper-proof cameras or fixed GPS tracking devices to ensure the safety of vulnerable passengers. We hear time and time again that Uber drivers have taken advantage of, of vulnerable passengers simply turning off their app on their phone. What recourse would a disabled passenger have without the evidence provided in these events from a tamper-proof camera and GPS tracking to ensure successful prosecution against any wrongdoing? Known lack of enforcement and consequences generates a lack of compliance. The safety of our most vulnerable citizens should be paramount when authorising who is able to provide them with transport service under what conditions. It should be mandatory for vehicles operating services under the multi-purpose taxi program to be fitted with cameras and fixed GPS tracking to reduce the likelihood of predatory behaviour against our most vulnerable transport users and most importantly to provide irrefutable evidence as needed to support any claims of wrongdoing. Three, there have been numerous cases to date where police have been called in to investigate potential criminal activity of Uber drivers. Rather than the local arm of the Uber business fully cooperating with the police in such matters, Uber chooses to obstruct the course of justice by referring all queries and warrants to Uber International Head Office offshore. This increases the workload and the cost of police investigations and in many cases not worthy of follow-up. Should we allow a corporate entity who shows complete disregard for our legal process by hindering their progress to hold a position of trust in the transport of our most vulnerable citizens? Uber's dynamic pricing will leave many disadvantaged people paying more. The lack of pricing control over Uber services means that vulnerable people will be out of pocket and potentially see part of their multi-purpose taxi program allocation eaten up by Uber's predatory surge pricing. Likewise, it exposes the scheme's taxpayer funding to unnecessary expense. 
to protect vulnerable travellers and ensure that the taxpayer-funded program is best utilised, should we not insist on the application of set fares rates for multi-purpose taxi programs subsidised work as what is applied to the taxi industry? It is well known and is reported in September 2019, a current affair that Uber uses underhanded tactics to dupe customers into thinking that an Uber ride is cheaper than a taxi. A current affair outed Uber for quoting comparative taxi fares at amounts far higher than they would normally be outside of the Uber app. There are clear concerns now over a passenger who may not have the capacity to na navigate these decisions well and will, and will react when confronted with the fake and misleading price comparisons. We must protect our vulnerable citizens from such blatant deception. Commonly, many Uber drivers find themselves to be underinsured or not covered at all in the event of an accident. Whereas taxis have commercial vehicle insurance coverage, Uber dri drivers many times rely on standard compulsory third party protections. In many cases, private vehicle policies do not cover accidents where the vehicle is being used for commercial purposes or where the vehicle owner did not declare prior to the, that the vehicle is being used commercially. This leaves wide open potential for travelling passengers to fall short of proper and comprehensive insurance coverage. Uber has shown that it will go at great lengths spending up big on high priced lawyers to, to say that it's not responsible for its drivers. It's if, a special passion, if a special needs passenger is injured or worse, abused or attacked, the victim will have no recourse. It must be mandated that Uber drivers and vehicles that carry appropriate insurance public liability coverage to protect both the passenger and the rider. Uh, sorry, the driver and the rider. Uber driver partners are not insured with work cover. The risk of personal injury associated with lifting collapsible wheelchairs into cars, assisting vulnerable passengers with their physical needs to board and disembark uh, the vehicle is very real. In past events of this nature, Uber has historically dismissed any responsibility towards its drivers. This raises significant concerns about the exploitation of Uber drivers and the context of delivering service under the multi-purpose taxi scheme. Introduces increased potential for workplace injuries, it must be mandated. Proper work cover insurance is carried by all commercial passenger vehicles. Changes to the multi-purpose taxi program scheme has opened it up to a potential for major rorting and vulnerable people being taken advantage of. Eight, the requirement for multi-purpose tech card holder is to present uh, in the vehicle during the trip in order to legitimately claim the travel subsidy through the program. When using taxis, multi-purpose taxi program card holders are required to present their card to the driver on the commencement of each trip and to process the, the subsidy payment on conclusion. However, when using the Uber app, card holders are only required to enter their card details once and when setting up their Uber account, all the information is saved for all the future trips. It is not uncommon for people other than the account holder to make bookings through someone else's individual Uber account. One can foresee how easily public funds may be misused as well as introducing potential for vulnerable multi-purpose taxi program participants to be exploited. It is a significant public importance to consider the debate of at the use of the taxpayer funded scheme, which supports offshore operations of a multinational giant that does not pay taxes locally. How can a government seriously endorse the use of taxpayers' dollars to subsidise travel costs charged by Uber, which skims 30% of the fare in commissions and then swiftly channels those funds offshore to tax dodging operations? I question the integrity of the taxpayer-funded subsidy program which chooses to support this sort of corporate behaviour, rather ensuring that the taxpayer's dollars uh, supports the local economy. The multi-purpose taxi program scheme costs the taxpayer to upwards of $70 million annually. It is an outrage that 30% of every subsidy dollar to Uber will now go, now go directly offshore. Just think about what, that's, that, what that really means. What it means is 30% of all the money that should be going into our local communities, supporting our local businesses, are going to go to the billionaire shareholders in Silicon Valley. Congratulations. Uber is cherry-picking the work within the disability sector at the expense of those heavily invested through the operation of the wheelchair accessible vehicles. 
The consequences of this will see WAV services decline, which will impact on those severely disabled passengers who use WAVs as their sole mode of transport. It is of great public importance that the impact of the expansion of the multi-purpose taxi scheme to include Uber is considered across the entire disability sector, including wheelchair and other special need users, so we get the balance right. To date, no consideration has been given to this matter. It costs $90,000 to put a wheelchair-capable taxi on the road and thousands every year to keep it right there. It is a specialist area requiring detailed driver training and ongoing compliance costs that, that Uber uh, means that for many operators, this investment will no longer be viable. Forcing them off the road and leaving wheelchair users on the curb in many country areas, this also means wiping out the regulated taxi service. Leaving communities stranded. Uber's business model does not include investment in vehicles and relies on transient and casual workforce to provide their own cars. Uber is simply not interested in providing service to wheelchair users and financial investments required to put a WAV on the road makes the proposition unviable for the driver partners. Should we allow Uber to access to a government subsidised program with them first displaying a tangible commitment to providing service uh, across the entire disability sector? as does the taxi industry. For many regional taxi services, the multi-purpose taxi program is the backbone of the business, accounting up to 50% of the trips uh, conducted. With this decision to expand the multi-purpose taxi program to include Uber, a reduction in revenue associated with the increased competition for the multi-purpose taxi program work will impact the delivery of web services. There is no doubt about that. The sheer commercial investment for specialised wheelchair accessibility vehicles and associated operating costs sees WAV services often run at a loss. The financial viability of operating WAVs is only possible through regular sedan work in other sections of the business which cross-subsidise the specialised area of transport. The potential reduction of multi-purpose taxi uh, work and associated revenue uh, across the fleet will leave in question for many operators, the commercial viability of offering WAV services. Wheelchair users will be most impacted should networks choose to discontinue their services. This is a critical point requiring urgent consideration. And I find it shocking that through the pandemic, when we were looking to raise support for, uh, for the taxi, it was all around trying to keep their wheelchair um, uh, wheelchair vehicles available. We can't say we didn't know. In 2020, when the Victorian Government designed the $22.7 million COVID-19 industry support package for the commercial passenger vehicle industry, it did so with the needs of wheelchair users at the forefront of considerations. The subsidy provided to booking service providers to ensure they were able to continue operating service for our most vulnerable and needy citizens was exclusive to BSPs who operated wheelchair access vehicles. This ensured that those passengers who have no other means of transport were not left standing during the pandemic. The decision to expand the multi-purpose taxi program to service provided by Uber will have a devastating consequences that will seriously jeopardise the commercial viability of offering WAV services. This will leave stranded our most needy transport users. The Parliament must intervene and demand an impact assessment on the WAV service delivery and other flow-on effects should this decision proceed. Uber is an organisation that has defied regulatory rep responsibility at every turn. From operating illegally, denying its drivers' rights under workplace laws, refusing to provide answers to the Australian Tax Office, hindering local police investigations by redirecting their queries to, the, to um, their offices offshore, and even dodging questions at the parliamentary inquiry, and when we did the, uh, uh, the research into doing the, uh, the support package for the taxi industry here. This company has failed again and again the character test continually, and yet again and again this is being supported by the industry regulator, the cheerleader, who itself is shrouded in a veil of accusations. Both organisations are before the courts facing serious allegations which, if proven, seriously raises the issues of appropriateness of the decision to expand the multi-purpose taxi program to include Uber services. Under the CPVV's own rules and regulation, Uber may not comply with the requirement of a fit and proper entity. 
to be registered as a booking service provider, let alone a fit and proper entity to provide transport service to our most vulnerable citizens. With access to a taxpayer funded scheme, the decision by the CPV to include Uber in the multi-purpose taxi program scheme must be reviewed and the utmost level of public scrutiny. 13. Uber is currently before the Supreme Court in two separate cases where it is alleged that prior to legislation passed in 2017, which introduced a low-cost CPV licence, they conspired with others, that is their driver partners, against the incumbent taxi and hire car rented to cause harm. This allowed Uber to penetrate the market unlawfully and gain a significant unfair advantage over others in the industry. These cases uh, is brought by the taxi and hire car operators and ex-licence owners in Victoria, Western Australia, Queensland, New South Wales, through a class, class action represent, represented by Morris Blackburn. The other thing being bought by the taxi industry is GoCat through Cause Chambers Westgarth, who are claiming harm to their business on the impact of the commercial viability through its operation at the time of Uber's services uh, outside the existing legislative and regulatory requirements. It is questionable decision to allow Uber access to publicly funded subsidy programs when they have the history of complete disregard of the law. The CPVV is itself being scrutinised to determine whether there, are, there may be evidence to bring a case against it for misfeasance in public office. The Victorian taxi families represented by Cause Chambers Westgarth have fought for three and a half years in the Supreme Court to obtain discovery documents that may support this claim. Victorian taxi families were successful in the initial case against the CPVV, uh, demanding relevant documents and further successful in broadening their claims following an appeal by the CPVV, which was lost. The appeal ruling has recently handed down and instructed the CPVV to hand over the required documents as requested and 80% of the costs being awarded to Victorian taxi families uh, for their legal costs. Should there be found significant evidence, a case may be brought against the regulator for misfeasance in public office, which may claim that the regulator was reckless and different to the harm that they may have caused to the incumbent industry by failing to uphold its statutory obligation to enforce legislation and regulations against Uber at the time of its unlawful operations. This may amount to an abuse of public trust and would bring into question the the decision to allow Uber to provide services under the multi-purpose taxi scheme without proper risk and financial impact assessment of the associated and broader consequences for the industry and disability services. I have three minutes. And I just want to say a little bit about the trial itself. The trial was done down in Geelong. Um, they probably picked the worst uh, area in uh, Victoria because Geelong has one of the best taxi services uh, in, uh, in Victoria. Geelong taxis, they, uh, before anybody can actually do a multi-purpose taxi uh, job, they have to have done at least 50 shifts. Not only do they have to have done 50 shifts, they have to have done a one-day course of how to deal with people um, who, with the, the very many uh, consequences of um, disabilities, mental health issues. Um, this is the standard that is set down there. And where has the regulator actually uh, measured the performance of 170 bookings against um, uh, an organisation that, that has been kicking goals for years. Um, there has been no comparison. This is a reward for Uber. This is merely, they're not interested in doing um, wheelchair work. What they're interested in doing is getting propped up and the regulator has done their best uh, to do them that favour. This is a disgraceful decision. This questions the safety of, of, the, of the services. Uh, the argument that um, some sections have put up that the taxi industry hasn't been able to service the demand, then I say prove it. I say prove it. We've had thousands of cars sitting around looking for jobs. Um, those people who want to make those claims, let, let's see the data that backs that up because it ain't there. Um, and I just re want to say this one more time. 30% of the money which is supposed to be going back into our local communities supporting small business is going to end up in Silicon Valley. That is something we should think very hard about. This contradicts, this contradicts the government's stated position about protecting workers in the gig economy. They're rewarding the worst behaved gig economy company on the planet. Uh, Uber is a Trojan horse to bring uh, the gig economy in. 
And I say no. I think I'll leave it at that, Mr. President. Thank you.